Hi everybody, my name is Matt Breckwald. Thank you so much for watching my video. This is the first ever video I've done for this YouTube channel and I just want to explain what this is all about. So I live in Idaho. I'm a farmer. I'm a professional agricultural podcaster and I am a huge fan of Alaskan campers. I have been for, man, I don't know how many years it's been, but I've been a huge fan of these campers since I first discovered that they even existed. And so I've looked at them and I've watched them and I've always wanted to get one. And actually years ago, my wife and I had a travel trailer, but that's when we lived in town in Boise. We live outside of Boise now on our farm. But when we bought our farm, we sold our travel trailer because we just knew we were going to be so busy with the farm that we wouldn't be using it enough. So we sold it and we put that money into buying cattle and, and developing our farm and doing all of that. Well, that's been 10 years ago now, a little over 10 years ago. And things have changed a ton. I'm now a full-time uh, entrepreneur, business owner, podcaster. The farm is kind of up and running. It's kind of it's in a place where it's managing itself really well. We've got some people that can help out that know how to do the you know how to run the place and keep things going. So it's a little bit easier to get away. Although it is still a challenge to get away, but it's definitely easier than it used to be. So, with that said, I started getting the bug to get back into camping and adventuring and things like that. And actually, the way that started was on a motorcycle. I'd never been a motorcycle rider, but I kind of got into it, and I ended up buying a 2019 Honda NC750X, which is a it's, a, it's an adventure bike, but it's really more like 90% road, 10% off-road. But I use it here in Idaho and go on all the Forest Service roads and the BLM roads and I camp off of that and when it gets warmer in the summer I'll be doing some videos about our trips off of the motorcycle. I got a couple guys that I go with and and we'll do some some videos about trips off of that but just about a month ago I drove from here in Cuna, Idaho where I live all the way to Fort Collins, Colorado and I bought the Alaskan camper that I'm now sitting in. I think it's a 1976, it might be a 1973, I can't, on the serial number part on the outside, I can't quite read what the year is, but I think he said it was a 76 in the ad, I just need to look at that again, but it's a 70s uh, cab over 10 footer, uh, it's in very good condition, I was super, super pleased with it, I bought it from a young man named Wyatt, uh, who's got his own custom hang business, and uh, a couple other small businesses he operates there outside of Fort Collins, Colorado, and I, I just did this whirlwind trip. As a matter of fact, I was about ready to go to California and buy one. And then this one, the day before I was going to leave, this one popped up for sale. And I called him up. I said, I'd much rather have the cab over for my personal preference. It looked like it was in great shape. It was a great price. And I switched my plans. And I actually, instead of driving to California, I drove to Fort Collins and I bought this camper. And I am so excited to finally have an Alaskan camper. It is everything I hoped it would be. And I'm pumped to have a vintage one. Um, I, I, I considered buying a brand new one, but then I started looking in the used market and just finding out how many things kept coming up in the used market. And they're still in great shape. And I love the older stuff. So I'm super, super excited to have this Alaskan camper. I watched so many videos of so many people out there with Alaskan campers when I was shopping for mine. Uh, when I wanted to figure out what I wanted to get, if I should get a used one, if I should get a new, new one, all that type of stuff. And uh, the people in the Alaskan camper community were so friendly and so helpful when it came time for me to try and find one and get one purchased and I had questions and things like that. I mean, even Brian at Alaskan campers there in uh, Winlock, Washington, uh, he's coached me on how to put the brackets on this camper for the Rico Titan Jacks. Um, and I didn't even buy a camper from him. This community is awesome. And, and what's hilarious about this to me is I have been such a fan of Alaskan campers for so long that I just thought everybody in the world knew about Alaskan campers and everybody was a huge fan. Well, I found this one. I went and bought it. I've had it for about a month. And I've talked to several people since then and told them what I went and bought. And I always preface... Uh, the story with, have you ever heard of an Alaskan camper? Do you know what an Alaskan camper is? I'm yet to have one person tell me yes. Nobody that I've talked to has any idea what an Alaskan camper is. So truly, those of us in this community that love these campers, uh, we're a small, tight-knit community, and we know a, we know a secret. 
I mean, honestly, we do. We know a secret that's out there that not a whole lot of people know, and I'm thrilled to be a part of it finally. I've always been a fan, like I said, but now I am an owner, and uh, I am just super, super pumped uh, to be in this club. And thank you all for having me and letting me be in this club. And, and the purpose of this channel really is I want to inspire other people uh, to get into this and uh, and to be part of this group and to enjoy this and so i'm going to be showing some of my adventures and how fun it is to live out of one of these things right now i, I got to go do chores here in a few minutes but i'm sitting out in my camper i've got the heater cranked up uh, that, that came in the camper plus the buddy heater it's february 1st as i record this and i am toasty i am very warm in this camper right now and i am thrilled i could live like this every single day now i have been waiting on my rico titan jacks to come so they didn't have any jacks for this uh the gentleman i bought it from or the young man i bought it from over in colorado so his dad had a diesel shop and they they pulled it off of his buddy's truck and they lifted it uh, with a hoist there in the shop and then we placed it down on my truck and then i strapped it onto my truck and i drove it home through wyoming and by the way uh, <laughs> that's a whole nother story in and of itself but I drove it home through Wyoming strapped to the pickup. So I've been waiting for the jacks and the brackets so I can get all that stuff mounted to the camper and then I'm gonna get it all tied down to the truck and have everything fastened so I can go out and have some adventures here in Idaho and Eastern Oregon and really wherever I wanna go. So this channel is gonna be all about adventures in Idaho and wherever else I go, either in the Alaskan camper or on the Honda motorcycle with the camping gear and the luggage and all of that and just going out and getting outdoors and it's called it's called off farm adventures for a reason so my podcast the main podcast that i host that i make my living with is called off farm income and that's about using small business and entrepreneurship to make your living uh, and to bring in the income that doesn't come from your farm your off farm income and so Obviously, it's a great name. It's a great segue to my other show to call this Off Farm Adventures because when you see me in this, except for, I guess, today, I'm going to be off the farm. I'm going to have found a way to go out in spite of having livestock, in spite of farming. I'm going to have found a way to go out and enjoy this playground that is Idaho uh, and, uh, and, and be out there having a ball in it and in the Alaskan camper. I just can't wait. I want to, I want to do some things to my pickup. I want to put a receiver hitch on the front of the pickup and get a, uh, a motorcycle hauler so I can actually haul my Honda and take it with me on, on these trips. And I want to get better at videography. I'm no good at it. Uh, I've gotten decent at podcasting. That's how I make my living. But when it comes to shooting video and talk to you, talking to you on video camera, uh, I am such a rookie at this. And so I want to get better at all of that. But really, I just want to share this lifestyle with you guys. And you know what's funny about this, or here's what my thoughts on are on Alaskan campers. If you're watching this and you're wondering if an Alaskan camper is for you. As I was looking around shopping for an Alaskan camper, first of all, I looked at the brand new ones and I mean, there's no way around it. They, they're gonna cost you some money. Of course, they're beautiful, they're very functional and they're, they're just top notch. They're hand built for you. And, and that cost, uh, you know, I think is probably justified. But then I started looking at the campers on the used market and there's some really nice campers out there on the used market at really, really reasonable prices, uh, including the one that I'm sitting in right now. I think this turned out to be a great, great deal for me. But then as I was looking online, I noticed that there is a, there's like a shop, they've got an Instagram page and a Facebook page um, located down in San Diego, California. And they have like a showroom full of Alaskan campers that they've fixed up and they're selling out of that showroom. And I've had this belief. Now, again, my belief is misguided because nobody I asked about if they knew what an Alaskan camper was ever said yes. But I've had this belief that these things are so awesome and they're so vintage um, and they, they perform so well that these are going to do what like old Toyota Land Cruisers have done, what old Ford Broncos have done. They're gonna get very, very popular and people are gonna start buying them left and right to be in these vintage campers. And so at some point, uh, like what has happened with the old Ford Broncos, I think that Alaskan campers are gonna be untouchable for folks like me. 
because they're going to get so popular with people that have money that they're going to go out, they're going to buy them, and the price of these on the used market is really going to go up. Now, we'll look here in a few years. We'll see if my prediction comes true, but that's what I think is going to happen with these Alaskan campers. So I was really happy to get my eyes on one. The moment I saw, you know, I was, I was still trying to decide whether or not I was going to buy one, and then the moment I saw that showroom down in San Diego, uh, where they're selling them out of a showroom, and it just looked like they were going to be targeting, uh, you know, these younger people that were in their late teens, early to mid 20s, who were wanting to go out and have adventure with these Alaskan campers. I looked at that and I went, it's not going to be long, and they're going to be unreachable. I need to buy one right now. And so I finally got off my butt and went out and did it. And I'm so excited to have one. So, now the rest of this video, I'll show you the outside of my camper. I'll show you the inside of my camper. I'm sorry I'm not a great uh, filmographer or whatever you call the people who are really good behind the camera. I'm sorry I'm not that great at that yet. I will try and get better. But I'll show you my camper. Everybody else does that. It's exciting if you're looking for these or you like them to look around and see what somebody else has. And more videos to come, everybody. Here's the tour. All right, everybody, so here she is. I think it's a 1976 or 1973 Alaskan. It's a 10-footer. And uh, I'll just show you. I'll do a walk around, and then we'll do more detailed on the inside. But I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, to me, it seems like it's in really good shape based on everything I was looking at on the used market when I was shopping. Uh, a couple I looked at uh, here in Boise. And uh, so to me, it looks like it's in pretty darn good shape. I've got the heat running in there right now uh, but the doors i mean the seals are old and they're cracked and um so i they need to eventually be replaced but for the time being i can live with it and go out and have fun in it but if you look at the sides and everything everything's in good shape as a matter of fact uh, these screens are all intact which that was one of the detriments i saw or saw in people's reviews of these screens that face outward they get ripped off eventually but this one didn't and uh, everything's in good shape up here. Uh, the one thing the previous owner pointed out to me is that the uh, gutters over the top of the windows are gone. They're missing. They didn't have them. They said they haven't had any trouble with that uh, since they redid the top. But um, I guess eventually I'll try and find those gutters. And there's no windows or any ventilation uh, on the sides for the sleepover or for the cab over sleeper. Uh, but there is a vent up above it, um, so I'm happy about that. And I've got this on top of my one-ton Ford F350. Um, it's just the only truck I've got, uh, but it's got plenty of weight to hold this, uh, or plenty of uh, springs and suspension to hold this Alaskan camper. And uh, it's my farm truck, so i got to get this camper off here so I can get back to work with it. Um, on the farm, but yeah, I, I'm not going to buy a separate pickup to haul this thing. So I bought a set of the Rico Titan Jacks. They just arrived, so I've got to put the brackets on. Uh, I talked to Brian over at Alaskan Campers just yesterday, and uh, he gave me instructions on how to put the brackets on. So I got to get the brackets put on, and then get the jacks put on, then I get this off of the pickup. And there's just a couple things I want to do to it, but really nothing major. And uh, then I'll be ready to go anytime I want. I just got to get good at backing, you know, underneath this thing and getting it mounted onto the pickup. Also, I've got this, it's a 2017 Ford, so it's got the aluminum bed back there. So I'm not going to mount to the bed, I'm going to mount to the frame. So I'm going to get those mounts put on. I can weld, but I just learned to weld. So I'm going to have them put on and then I'm going to mount uh, to those, you know, to the frame supports rather than to the bed, uh, just because this is that aluminum bed. Now there's one little piece of damage right there. You can see, I'll zoom in on it. Um, but I slept in this in Laramie, Wyoming after I bought it, and that just was not a big deal. Um, so I might replace that eventually, but quite honestly, I bought an old one because I don't have to worry about it. You know, I can just use it. And uh, I'm really happy that I got a used one. It came with an awning, which is interesting. I still haven't figured out how to pull that awning out. It's a sidewinder too, and I'm really not sure how to pull it out, but uh, I will eventually figure it out. But yeah, there you go. There is the Alaskan, the 10-footer. Uh, the previous owner had built this frame and put under it so it would get up above the cab on my pickup. And we actually, he had forgot to bring it to the shop when I bought this. 
And so we actually tried to put this in the truck without the frame, but um, it was not gonna get up above my cab, like it was gonna rub on top of the cab of the pickup. So he ran home and got this frame and brought it back. Then we reinst reinstalled this in there uh, with that frame on there. But now it fits really, really well. Um, I just have the super cab on the pickup. So these back doors, they kind of swing out like suicide doors. Um, and they don't go all the way around to a full 180 locked open position, but they open really wide without touching the camper. So any of you with a super cab who are wondering, um, I can get these open to about um, 150 degrees. Uh, not the full 180, they swing out to about 150 degrees even with that frame right there. But of course I've got those two by fours, that frame built of two by fours underneath the camper to get it up a little bit further uh, to help with that. And then bringing it home, I just use big uh, automobile straps and uh, I use these axle straps uh, that I've got uh, like some small clevises attaching them to the hooks inside the bed and the straps went over the top and around the back for coming home from Wyoming or from Colorado, I should say, uh, with this camper. But yeah, let's take you on the inside. My new Alaskan camper. All right, so I'm gonna need to come up with some sort of a solution for getting in and out of this. I don't know if I'm gonna buy those scissor stairs or make something myself. I'm not quite sure, I haven't come up with something yet. I might just get a three-step ladder that I can use rather than uh, this two-step one I've got here. I don't know, I'm still trying to figure that part out. Yeah, here she is. So this is, it's February 1st as I'm filming this. So I got heat going in here. So I've actually got the heater from the camper going. Um, and it works good, it kicks out heat, but I've got this buddy heater going at the same time to, uh, to get it really nice and toasty in here. But yeah, here's the heater down here. And it's working good, it's putting out heat. The previous owner did like an aftermarket fan thing on there, so you flip it on and it kicks on a little fan to kind of create some convection from that radiant heater down there. Uh, the door is in good shape. Uh, if you look here, uh, this latch right here doesn't really catch. So I got to rely on the upper part of the door for the latch to catch and to hold the door shut. And I got to get a locksmith to key it so I can lock it. Although it's probably not going to be that secure of a lock, but it just makes me feel better when I leave to have it locked. Um, and then, yeah, it's got good storage. Everything's pretty clean, in good shape. Uh, really happy with that. Uh, I've got my battery in there. I've got an AGM battery. Uh, researched it. I'm going ahead and put one. I put one in there, but we'll see how that lasts. And I don't know. I'm not too worried about fumes or or anything like that. But we'll see what happens with that. Uh, this storage. I may go ahead and get a little cassette toilet and put it back in here for those really cold nights or like when you're staying in a Walmart parking lot or something like that. Um, so I may do that, I don't know. Still deciding, it's fun because I still get to make all these choices. Uh, the sink, the water pump works. Uh, the stove works good. According to the previous owner, the refrigerator works. <laughs> Sorry, which is right here. Uh, he says that works. And uh, I have not plugged that in or tried that yet. I haven't even plugged this into 110 yet. I just got running off that battery I bought. And uh, it's in really good condition as far as I can tell uh, compared to the ones I looked at. Uh, it's really good. This foam bed that they've got up here is not the most comfortable thing, so I may replace that. But I like the upholstery in it. I like the old school vintage stuff. It's still got the roll down shades, um, which the sun is bleaching that out. But it's got the roll down shades and they're not in the best shape, but they still work. Uh, the storage up here has work. You know, everything's pretty clean and working good. I can't do that one handed. That's how good it's working. I can't do it one handed. Um, but they all work good and they're clean. A couple modifications they've made, like right there, they put uh, 110 or uh, 12 volt outlets on that for charging. 
and stuff like that. They put a, a car stereo in here, which I didn't really care about. I'd probably bring a, like a little transistor or uh, just a, a wireless speaker to play out the Bluetooth with my phone. But honestly, it's kind of cool to have it and my Bluetooth hooks right up to it. So it's kind of cool to have that. And uh, it's got these cool little flip up shelves for extra you know, space while you're sitting there. You don't have to have the dinette in, which I kind of like. I mean, I like the dinette, don't get me wrong. And it's got that and it's up here. But sitting there without the dinette, I can put my feet up on the other side and relax pretty good. And it feels pretty roomy when you're sitting in here. And so I kind of like uh, just using those little tables. But I haven't been able to have that many adventures in it yet. But I am looking forward to doing so. And just thought I would record stuff on this channel uh, to share that. Because I relied on, you know, looking at other people's YouTube videos when it came time for me to go shopping and find my Alaskan. So that's kind of the inside and I'm sure as time goes on, I'll show you more of the inside as I figure other stuff out. Uh, but the lights are all working. Carbon monoxide wor alarm's working. And uh, I am thrilled with this sucker. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll be making more as soon as I am able to. And just fun to share all of this with you and be part of this community. I'm glad to be part of it. And thank you so much for having me.